Hey, what is going on, my brotherhood? Welcome to another new episode of Curious Creations. That was nice. This month, we're doing some horror-themed characters and uh, and re recognition, rec wow, recognition, recognition. <laughs> I was like, what wow. kind of word are you trying I, to I am up? butchering the English English language is what I'm doing. Mm. Um, but we are recognizing some of the more horror-themed or ghastly creatures that it, that people have created throughout their homebrew lives in D&D. So, uh, like I said, this is a discussion of homebrew D&D races and classes, so let's go ahead and get into <laughs> it with our first race. And today we will be discussing the Embodied Mouther. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The embodied mother. It looks... It's pretty creepy. Creepy. Yeah. Originally known as a gibbering mouther. Well, I mean, don't they start as gibbering mouthers? Yes. Okay. But I'm just... I'm reading from the thing. Okay. My bad. So, uh, just so you guys know, I will bring this back up here in a minute just so we can uh, talk about it. But physical description, at a distance they appear to be normal humans or even elves, slightly shorter than most and well covered uh, even on the hottest days, but on a close unhindered inspection, one may notice the small to medium sized slits that cover their skin. They are easily mistaken for scars or recent cuts, but the sheer number of them is that is the particular part. It is only when these slits open that their true nature is revealed, the many eyes and mouths of serrated teeth coming to focus before the overwhelming gibbering overcomes them. Embodied mouthers usually cover themselves entirely with clothes and other accessories that hide their slits and disguise their true nature. They usually have dusky skin, black wiry hair, and dark wide eyes. So yeah, um, interesting race. Uh, they are an aberration, which I don't know if you know that monsters. It's a type it. of monster. Okay, I, I did. I didn't know. Hey, hey, hey! I didn't know. Uh, but uh, sorry, I wanted to bring up something there. Um, originally known as Gibbery Mather, so again, these creatures right here. The embodied Mather has developed great control over its body structure, slowly forming itself over the years, from the aberrant, ooze-like creature it was into a more humanoid form. An embodied Mather would be able to tell you that at some point in its endless life, that after one of many meals, there was a turning point where something shifted inside of it and a collective sense of sentience made itself apparent and it was from that sentience that a curiosity was born. What am I? What have I been doing this whole time? Is there more to my existence than the next meal? And it began to explore the world and inhabiting alternating, alternate its form over many years. Learning from the beings it consumed and those that it watched from the shadows. Few scholars are even aware of the existence of such a species, however, among those that do, it is believed that the process of becoming this rare requ uh, requires an extraordinary amount of creatures to be consumed by the gibbering mouther, as well as an environment to develop its intellect and what is left of its sanity. In addition to this, the safe studying of humanoid society is also required. So it's a pretty interesting race. It takes a lot to become it. Right. You'd have to be very special. Yeah, you'd have to. You'd you're, have to be. You're a, you're a unicorn. Yeah, you're a unicorn. <laughs> why are we? Why are we talking about unicorns? I don't know. <laughs> we talked about them last time. Yeah. Well. Um. So there's not really much of a society to the embodied mouther. They kind of just kind of get into the society that that surrounds them, either elves, humans, something like that, because they don't really band together as you know. They're very rare to begin with. But as a people largely controlled by a hunger for the living, embodied mouthers usually avoid the spotlight, sticking underground or to the outskirts of large cities so they can at least, uh, they can feast on lost or abandoned humanoids, whether out of necessity or sport. However, while uncommon, a mouther may sate themselves with the corpses of beasts or other creatures. They don't form societies due to how uncommon it is for a gibbering mouther to consume such a large amount and transform into an embodied mouther. The amount they need to consume to maintain their state makes it largely impractical and the difference between them and their gibbering cousins are too significant. Now, um, 
The one cool thing, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this, but as you can see, a gibbering mouther is literally an aberrant like ooze creature that is covered in eyes and mouths. While an embodied mouther will have a humanoid shape and they will have eyes and mouths that appear as slits all over their skin when they open. Now, um, I'm going to play one voice clip from our video that will be coming out here soon. Why? Because it's awesome and I want people to hear it. But they're going to hear it if they watch the third video. Yeah, it's you just can't so give cool. it, You can't give it away. Uh, okay, they got to buy the cow, Caleb. Okay, you they, can't get the... You got to buy the cow, I guess. You got to buy the cow. All I'm going to say is, when a gibbering mouther and a bounty mouther starts to stalk its victim, all of the mouths will gibber incoherently and uh, talk all at once. So... Uh, the voice actor for this uh, set, for this uh, character, my <laughs> good friend Shiloh Strawn, she did an amazing job. Uh, even though there are two very short lines, she did an amazing job making those lines sound like they came from an embodied or gibbering mouth, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it because I enjoyed it a lot. Um... And bounty mouthers tend to take names from the society that they're close to. So if a human society, they're going to pick something humanist, you know. That's not what they said. Pick a name from one of the creatures that they have eaten over the years. Yeah. Yeah, so. so it's an, it's, they didn't pick it. It just happened. They're just like, today, my name is Todd. I think I ate him. <laughs> well, I'm still technically, you know. Yeah. Um, so, did you have any questions about the bounty mouther? I'm confused. Do they always part take a female form? No. Okay. No. I just decided to pick a female for this because... Well, no. I mean, all of the pictures I've seen are female, too. There's not a lot of pictures. This is the only picture of an embodied mouther I can mm. find. Hmm. And I don't even think this is a real embodied mouther. I think this came from a manga. This probably came from something, yeah. Yeah, so... Don't... I mean, this is, this is the picture that's on the official wiki page, so don't be mad at me i'm sorry right but i decided to go with a female because i thought this care i thought i wanted to write for this character as a female so um but if you have no other questions i'm gonna go ahead and get well into the i imagine it's just female shaped because i don't they have yeah I, I think it's just female shaped yeah they, like don't, they have, don't have a gender they don't have genitalia they don't or anything breed or something yeah. like that yeah well they, they might they might like ooze off breed I guess. I don't, I don't know how they. I don't know like how they're Like cell, cell, cellulosis or mitosis or. What are you even saying? Like when a when a when a starfish cuts off half, like loses its arm, and another starfish is made. Um. I don't know what that is. I don't remember. I can imagine that's how they breed. I don't know. I, well, I that dep it depends on how gibbering mouth or the regular forms. There's breed. probably nothing about how gibbering mouthers. Okay. So. Well, I mean, I imagine that you know ooze, what? I'm going to click into it and I, find know, out real quick. I bet quick. oozes do the same thing. Uh, there is nothing in here about... Yeah. It's probably just like oozes. They probably just split. The gibbering mother's body is an amorphous mouse of, uh, mass of mouse eyes and propels itself by oozing forward, fastening several mouths to the ground and pulling its bulk behind. That sounds awful. Though it moves slowly, it swims through water, mud, and quicksand with ease. It's probably, it's probably just like you said, they probably just split. Yeah. I, I think it... They probably have to eat so much and then they can split. Yeah. Would an embodied mouther make another mouther? Em embodied mouther? No, I'd probably just be a gibbering thing. Yeah, it probably would be. I was All just, right. I was just thinking, like, what if they really spores? <laughs> oh, gross. No. <laughs> um, Okay. So, uh, for the traits for an embodied mouther, your constitution score is going to increase by two, which makes a whole lot of sense. You are an aberrant, ooze-like creature that's formed yourself into a physical representation of a human or elf, so that makes sense. Um, and you get to you get to choose one other ability score to increase by one. <laughs> I always hate the choice. I wish they would just assign Maybe, it. Because they, they, like they said with the name, like... They, you can make the person's name the reason you chose it significant. Like, maybe it could be based on something you ate. Yeah. I don't know. I think maybe you could play around with that and, like, you have a story behind it. Like you That's ate, what I did. You kinda. ate, like, a really big barbarian and, <laughs> and you were like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. 
But uh, I I kind of I hate it when they when they leave it up to choice. Just choose an ability score and it increases by one. I hate that. It really irritates me. So if I was going to do something with this, I would honestly I would increase your intelligence by one. Because it literally says in the backstory that you spend your time studying humans, right. studying society, yeah, and that and increasing your intelligence by one would show that you're not just an ignorant aberrant monster anymore, right? That you're not that you're trying not to be. So, right. um, age and a body mother lives for as long as they can hold their sanity <laughs> together through the consumption of living creatures. Otherwise, they revert back to a gibbering mouther. Mm. So they have to continuously eat. Unfortunately. Um, alignment. Due to the monstrous nature of embodied mothers, they are always considered chaotic and their need to feed leans them towards neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be between four to six feet in height and are considered medium and weigh just a bit more than humans. Uh, base walking speed is 30 feet. Aberrant origin. You have two creature types, humanoid and aberration. You can be affected by a game effect if it works on either of your creature types. That makes sense. You have dark vision because everything in 5th edition D&D has dark vision. Except for humans. Except for humans. Screw humans. You don't get to see in the dark. Everybody else can. Uh, Mouther's Bite. You have a multitude of mouths all over your body that allows you to bite nearby creatures. Your unarmed strikes deal 1d6 piercing damage. Which makes sense, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, encompassing Sight. When you make a wisdom perception check as part of a search action... Uh, you can open the various eyes that cover your body. When you do this, you are considered proficient with a perception skill and add double your proficiency bonus to, with to the check. <laughs> if you are already proficient instead of your normal proficiency bonus... Uh, okay, so I read that. So if you are proficient in perception skill, you get to add double your proficiency to it. Hmm. Be warned, as eyes appearing all over your body of a humanoid creature isn't something that is typical of them... Creatures that see you do this may become aware of your aberrant origins. I feel like that's obvious. Like, if you open a bunch of eyes, like, people would be like, what the hell's going on over there? <laughs> so, I mean, that's pretty nice. If you don't have the uh, perception skill, uh, ch skill mm -hmm. you get it, kinda. You just have bit. to use your encompassing sight. If you already do have it, you get to add double your proficiency bonus. Right. Well, it makes sense. Having a lot of eyes to look at. I mean, as long as you, you're you able to process what each eye is looking at and what it means. And it sounds like they're able to, so. Yeah, that's quite a bit of mental gymnastics going on there. Gibbering. As an action, you can awaken the suppressed mouths in your body until the start of your next turn, causing them to mummer and chatter, each with a different voice, deep or shrill, wailing or ululating, crying out in agony or ecstasy. This cacophonous gibbering overcomes the senses of any creature that hears it within 20 feet of you. Creatures within range must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. On a failure, that creature can't take re uh, reactions until the start of its next turn, and rolls a d4 to determine what, what it does on this turn. On a 1 or 2, the creature uses all its turn to run as far away from you as it can. On a 3 or 4, the creature takes no action or bonus action and its speed becomes 0. The DC for the saving throw equals 8, plus your constitution modifier, plus your proficiency bonus. You regain this use of this trait once you complete a long rest. Right. And you I get the love that. You get the plus 2 to the con right away, so yeah. I freaking love that. <laughs> I love it so much. Just being able to just, you know, have those mouths open up and start wailing and you know crying and all that stuff well it's confusing oh yeah um mother's nature there's a lot of uh, things you get with this um you can only eat meat and require the same amount of food a normal medium-sized creature needs each day while this food sates you for the day, it simply isn't enough. A hunger from from your monstrous origins demands more. If you do not sate this hunger using your devour traits, you must make an intelligence saving throw at the beginning of your next long rest to maintain your form and calm the mouths throughout your body that demand to be fed. On a failed save, you indiscriminately attack or hunt for the nearest living creature and upon their death, devour them. The DC for this saving throw is 10 and increases by 2, for your each long rest, you do not sate it. The hunger can only be sated by consuming a living creature. While sated, you don't need to eat or drink as a normal medium-sized creature would each day. You can go a number of days equal to one plus your constitution modifier without sating this hunger. 
this is going to make this race very difficult to play. Yeah. Unless you're playing a... An evil campaign, maybe? Well, you could still play a good campaign, but you have got to make sure that you take every advantage to devour something when you have taken out a bad guy group or something. Right, but when you're traveling with a group and you're trying to pretend that you're normal, that might be a really difficult thing. Yes, it's going to be difficult. Yeah, it, because then you're like... Cause at, at what some happened point, to that guy's body? Yeah, like... <laughs> I feel like that'd be a really hard thing to actually hide if from a as a playable character. It's it, it it's gonna be difficult. And you might attack you might, if you fail if you roll bad like I usually do. You could just all of a sudden start attacking the people your other players and they're gonna be like, "What the heck?" God, if you do not satiate your hunger, and you are so might, screwed. And then they might just kill you for being creepy, like. <laughs> it's it's gonna it's gonna be different. Um. This is one of those characters that I say definitely get one of those, uh, um, one of those, uh, uh, phone apps that you can, or that you can privately message, a dungeon messenger. It's a good app to use for, uh, uh, PCs to communicate with their dungeon master so that, uh, you can communicate with your dungeon master and let them know that you want to do this, um, without people knowing what you're going to do. And he will let them know if it's, if it becomes relevant to them. Uh, playing in a body mouther though is gonna be difficult. Yeah, it's gonna be difficult in a group unless they already know or it's a bad guy campaign and maybe you guys just all hate each other anyway. Or if you're all a bunch of monsters already, so Yeah, if you're a bunch of monsters, whatever. Then you can all go eat together. Yeah. <laughs> you can fight over the meal. Yeah, it's like Can 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 the vampire like drain some blood first and then you can eat the corpse? Well not not the corpse, you still want it to be li living when you eat it. No, the vampire doesn't have to drain them, necessarily. Yeah, I know. So, That's yeah. why I said give them a taste, yeah, see, you know. See, like, yeah, have Work a... together. Exactly. This is all about working together and Let's... being the monsters that you all know you can be. That's lame. There we go. <laughs> um, devour is the last action you get. As an action, you can consume a creature at zero hit points within five feet of you, sating your hunger. You can only safely devour creatures that are medium or smaller in this way. Medium-sized creatures sate you, sate you for a week. Small-sized creatures for three days. And tiny-sized creatures sate you for the day. You gain no benefit from devouring undead or constructs. Makes sense. If you devour a large-sized creature, you have overeating, co eaten, causing your physical body to become vis uh, for, uh, causing your physical form to visibly melt. Your body and maws become lethargic and sluggish. During this time, your walking speed becomes 10 feet and you are affected by the poison condition until you have digested your meal. Wow, that sucks. Yeah. Digesting this meal takes 24 hours to do so and satisfy, satisfies you for a month. That's almost beneficial, yeah, though. Yeah, like, I mean, oh! but it means that during that time, you're revealed and you couldn't get away if you wanted to. And I, someone could I'm just, just saying, and, if you can get away with it. If you, yeah, I was like, if you have someone protecting you for a day that wouldn't be so bad it gets worse you cannot eat a creature that has a size of huge or larger without breaking it into smaller parts alternatively when you reduce a, cre a living creature within five feet of you to zero hit points you can as a reaction devour them completely gaining temporary hit points equal to your level plus your constitution modifier while this provides you with the wealth of nourishment instantly it causes your hunger to return faster by only say sating you for half as long rounded down you regain the use of this trait once you complete a long rest Jeez. gosh i like how like many of medium cre care creatures are a week and small sized creatures are three days that means but large sized creatures are a month well what i mean is like small that's like halflings and gnomes like you'd have to eat even if you ate two gnomes it wouldn't make up for a medium sized creature <laughs> I think it's because you're eating the medium-sized creature all at once, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Well, no, I mean, it just... It, that means if you if you lived amongst gnomes or something, well, you mean you would stick out, but... Yeah, you like, to, why you would, would you... would have to eat a lot. Like, way more. That means you're just like, oh, no, I, I need... I want to... I'm going for a week. Halflings get to live today. <laughs> so... <laughs> that dwarf over there, though. <laughs> He's medium. That'll get me. <laughs> 
So for languages, you can speak, read, and write common and under common. While you're capable of speech and writing, you don't you uh, you don't do so with accuracy of most other humanoids. You sometimes use words incorrectly or write nonsense if you aren't concentrating. The mental capacity it takes to suppress your gibbering and your monstrous origins are the cause of this. So, wow. <laughs> Um, and there is some suggested char uh, characteristics down here on the bottom for this uh, for this uh, race. Uh, when creating a body uh, mother character, you can use the following table of personality traits, blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to go over a couple of them. Um, I avoid showing any... Uh, this is a personality trait. I avoid showing any emotion due to how hard I find it to keep myself contained. I can't... I can stare down a hellhound without flinching. Uh, I am always calm no matter what the situation. I never raise my voice or let my emotions control me. I despise weakness in any form. Um, here's, an, here's a couple ideals. Uh, I became what I am to get closer to the people I hold within me. <laughs> well, I mean, that sounds nice, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's a nice bowler. Like, they're just like, yeah. I like to keep people that I like close. <laughs> as before and as now all are prey before my mouse ma maws maws i thought it was yeah. mouse no i think it's moss oh uh, well i am free to consume whoever i choose <laughs> uh here's a couple bonds those i consume are closest to my heart there you go you wow. you eat the ones you love so they stay with you forever i ate the person i came to love <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I seek a life worth living outside of the darkness I was born into. And a, fl a couple flaws. <laughs> my friends are my most treasured possessions, and they fill me with the warmth of the sun. Aww. <laughs> Cute. Because they're inside me. <laughs> Cute. All right, so I'm going to read a couple flaws here. Uh, the closer I am to the people, uh, to I am to people, the more I feel the need to eat them. Wow, that, that sucks. When I am upset or uncomfortable, my mouths begin to chew at what is around them. Ew. Uh, that, that would be hard to hide. Yeah, like, I know. Is, is your... What happened to your so clothes? I dum like it's dum. just moving underneath. <laughs> when I am alone with others, I feel the urge to eat them, when, even when sated. <laughs> I chew on things to sate my hunger. So I just grab a stick and like, <laughs> like you hold the stick to your side and a mouth just comes out and starts biting it. <laughs> I have a habit of babbling incoherently. And I am a glutton and can't help but overeat. Mm, man. That just means you're a little, you're like super socially awkward. Like, you're just like, oh, uh, you're just like, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So the embody mouther, what do you think? Um, I think this is another one of those classes that would be hard to play unless you're specifically in a campaign that Race. would be... Or, what did I say? Class? class, yeah. Sorry. It's okay. Um, I think it'd be a hard race to be in a campaign unless you have something worked out with your, with your DM beforehand. See, I would love to play a race like this only because I want the challenge of trying to fool my, my player, my, my co-players. Into thinking that there's nothing wrong with me. Yeah, but see, uh, you also have to work with your DM because sometimes you have like bad DMs and they're just gonna like, ha ha, I'm gonna reveal it because I think it's, like, I don't know. You have to be careful when you're doing like hidden stuff because sometimes a DM will like ruin the ruin the game before it even gets there. That is very true. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like I said, I do like the idea of playing something like this just because I wanna, you know, I wanna do that with my co-players. I wanna be like try to hide myself while at the same time doing what I need to do as my as my race. Right. It'll be hard, though. It's fun, though. Yeah. It's a challenge. I'm just saying, like, you might need at least one one trustable companion that, like... Like one person in the group yeah. that you're just like, yeah, I, yeah, hey, hey, just because I eat people doesn't mean I'm gonna eat you. Well, I mean, but there are other things that eat meat and stuff. Like if you if you got to like hooked up with like a hunter, who just <clears throat> who helps you give like that dog would be willing to give you kills or something, or let you buy something like you're like hey I need a cow, <laughs> like a farmer, 
Like you just go and buy cows every once in a while, and they're like, "What do you guys do? What do you do with all them cows?" Like, oh, I well, them. there's a ranch, you know. Yeah, no, you're just like, oh, I butcher them, you know, blah blah blah. Yeah, like you just keep going back for cows or something. My dad was a butcher, and I really, I just really want to keep my my skills up to par. Yeah, like, I mean. <laughs> I think if you're in a body mouther and you're coming up with a backstory, you should definitely have something like wh- how they've been getting by. And it could be something silly like that. There you have like a butcher that you go to and you're like, hey, I'm here for my cow. <laughs> like a one Well, remember, they have to be living. Yeah, that's what the I mean. The meal. Yeah. I, I'm just making sure you know that. Yeah. All right. Well, that was, this is a really interesting race. I really like it. I think it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be, I think it's an interesting Thing. It would definitely make it very interesting on PC slash probably hidden enemy, but... That'd be another cool thing, be a hidden enemy that slowly picks apart at the party. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to play one of those play, uh, play uh, as one of those uh, players where, like, the GM knows that you're going to do this? So, like, you literally spend the whole entire campaign trying to bring down your other players. Yeah. And see. the other players, once they're dead, are not allowed to tell any of the other players what happened to them. They just have to go through the game. See, I mean, yeah, that does sound interesting. But the problem is, is with, fucking... the way, with the way our parties tend to go, like, they, everyone knows. That's why, that's why I really want to start using the Dungeon Messenger app, you know? Well, no, it's just, even if I did try to play that ca- uh, character like that, there's already people that are like already suspect suspect me of things for no reason i know but i always my characters always have a trick up their sleeves so everyone always suspects that i got something going on so i can't really play hidden characters anymore because they all suspect that i got something so like no one really trusts me that much anymore which is part of the problem of playing with like a really established group for so long everyone yeah. just kind of goes yeah okay yeah no she's she's definitely doing something the first person to die is they're gonna be like all right it was one of you and it was probably christina and then all of a sudden they're like like <laughs> I, I i don't have elements of surprise anymore <laughs> all right well in the next episode we will be talking about the class that we will be pairing with our embodied mouther and we will discuss it so i hope you guys are excited if you are head on down that like button make sure you hit it for us and if you're new make sure you subscribe and join the brotherhood because we'll be talking about all kinds of amazing uh races classes uh for D D in the next coming months we have one more uh character to talk about in october i'm hoping to have it out before the end of october no promises. Uh, life's been kind of hectic right now. So uh, we'll try to get it out as soon as possible, though. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you all next time. Bye! Bye-bye.